Hi, how are you doing? Uh, this video is a revision video for Quest 2 where we're going to revise uh, Microsoft Expression Web 4. First of all, I will start by creating a source folder. A folder will contain all the files of the website. I'm going to create mine on Documents. So right click New Folder. I'm going to name it Revision, name it with any name as you like. Then from all programs, I will open Expression Web. I have it already opened and minimized here. Uh, remember, by default, Expression Web will open with the default, uh, sorry, uh, the last website you were working on. We're going to create a new site from Site Menu. Select new site then we're going to create a, a website with one page one page site uh, you may create an empty site this time we're going to create one page site remember you have to create your site on the same folder we just created on documents so browse go to documents Okay, here, uh, just click Revision, Open, okay, now we're having um, a website with only one, uh, one HTML site, um, one HTML page, okay, uh, it's named it default uh, as it will be our home page and we need to keep it as default to be our home page. Step number one will be double clicking the HTML. Okay. To open it, we are in design tab. If we click here, we're having the code or the main code we already created before using HTML. Expression Web will give us the code without any need to type what we're gonna type here in design will be translated into code in the code uh, tab stick to design tab then we're going to right click page properties from the general tab title I'm going to give my website a title I'm gonna name it revision again and from the formatting tab i'm going to change the background to any color i'm gonna uh, color it uh, with light blue so from more colors i'm going to select a light blue color okay then save all right click open web google chrome now we're having our website with a title revision and a light blue background. Uh, next in this video, you will learn how to uh, how to insert a table and how to work with the table properties, how to work with the cell properties, how to add uh, or to insert an image, how to work with that image. Uh, how to uh, work with hyperlinks, how to work with interactive buttons as well. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is how to create a table using Microsoft Expression Web. So this is taken from the June 2016 Summer 32 paper. So in this question, we have to create this table. So the first thing we need to identify is how many rows and columns we have in this table. So if we look at this example, we can see we've got one, two, three, four rows and also we have four columns as well. So what we need to do is we need to click on table and then insert table and then we need to enter the number of rows and columns we're going to have in a table and then we need to specify how wide the table is going to be. So in pixels we need to enter the size. So this table will be 736 pixels wide. We don't need to enter the height because when we start formatting individual cells, we can then include the height of the cells. So let's go to Expression Web 4. So I've already opened up a page, I've saved it. So to create a table, you click on Table, 
and you click on insert table. So as mentioned, identify how many rows and columns you're going to have. So looking at this example, we will have four rows and then four columns. And then in pixels, how wide is the table? So the table is going to be, um, if we zoom in, 736 pixels wide. So let's include the size here. Okay. So we've created our table. Um, we've got four rows. So that's the first row, second row, third, and fourth. And then four columns. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So the next thing we would have to do is then to format the cell sizes. So if we go to the next slide, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Actually, before we format the cell sizes, we need to merge some cells. So to merge cells, we highlight the cells, we right click on the mouse, and then we click on merge cells. So you'll notice the top row and the bottom row needs to be merged together. So if I go back to expression, let me highlight the top row. So if I highlight all of the cells, so you press the mouse, uh, left mouse button down, you right click on your mouse, and you click on modify to merge the cells. Okay, and this cell has now become one. And then if you look back at the example again, the bottom row has also been merged as well. So if we highlight uh, the row of cells at the bottom, right click your mouse and then click on modify and merge cells. Okay, so let's go back um, to this question here. Let me zoom out. Okay. Now what we're going to do is enter the sizes for each of the cells. So to do so, what we need to do is right click in the cell and then select cell properties. Okay, so we can enter the sizes in either pixels or in a percentage. So if I go back to this question here, let's just read. Um, this web page must work in all browsers and have a table structure shown below. Each cell is identified with a letter and all dimensions are in pixels. So we need to make sure we're selecting pixels. So let's look at the first row. The first row, the height will be 172. So if I right click in the first row, click on cell properties, we need to specify the height in pixels. Um, let me double check. Yep, it's going to be 172. We don't need to specify how wide it's going to be because the table is automatically um, being set as 600 or 736 pixels wide. So you can include it, but it's not going to make any difference. Um, 736, apply, and then let's format the bottom row. So the bottom row, the height will be 140. So again, you click in the bottom row, right click on your mouse and go to cell properties. You can sp specify how wide the table is going to be again, but it's not going to make a difference. So 736 by 140. And then make sure you've selected in pixels, click on apply, done. Okay, you'll notice the second row and the third row has the same dimensions. So each cell will be 184 by 140. So what we can do is we can highlight all of the cells at the same time. We can go to um, cell properties and we can specify how wide each cell will be. So it will be 184 and then we always enter the height second and the height will be 140 click on apply job done now there's two ways of center aligning um, the table in the browser so let me show you the first method so if we go back to expression if I highlight the table so if I click on the outline and then click on this option up here we can click here to align the table, um, center align the table, and you can see that the table is now moved into the center. Okay, so why is this um, table slightly different? First of all, we don't have any dimensions. So if you look at the previous example, here's one example you've got dimensions. This table is 620 pixels wide. Uh, let me go up. And this table is 736 pixels wide, and we've got dimensions for each of the cells. However, here you can see we don't have any dimensions for the cells. So sometimes what we need to do, we need to go down and have a look at the rest of the paper. So in the CSS, we can see the table will be 600 pixels wide. 
So when I make this table, I'm going to set it at 600 pixels wide. So the first thing now I need to identify is how many rows and columns we have. So we're going to have one, two, three, four rows and three columns. So to create this table, I will go to table, insert, and four rows, three columns, and always include in pixels the size of the table going across. So how wide will the table be? So it will be 600. Before I press enter, let me double check. One, two, three, and four. And we can press enter. Okay, and then let's merge the cells. So the top row is merged across. So let me click on modify, click on modify and merge cells. Okay, this column here is merged all the way down from the second uh, row. So modify, merge. And then this cell here, basically these two cells are merged together as well. Okay, so that's the table. So just before we move on, the next slide looks at um, inserting content into our table. So let me just go and uh, we can insert content into this table here. So if I just go to full screen. So we can either type in text into our table or we can copy the text from different sources and place it in our table. So here's an example here. Um, we have a heading and then we have um, some text and we have an unordered list. And you can see the text has been formatted as well. So text can be entered or copied and pasted from external sources. We can insert a picture by going to insert picture from file or we can click on an icon on the toolbar as well. Um, so if you are inserting a picture, make sure you click in the right cell and then go to the relevant options to insert the picture. So the first thing I'm going to do with this, with this paper is insert the text. So since I have the paper opened electronically, um, what I can do is to simply copy and paste the text. So obviously in the exam you'd have to write in the text. So the question paper said basically text shown in bold must be entered into your web page. So that's why I'm just copying and pasting them in. Okay, let me keep going. Here are three things needed to upload and publish a website. And then website created by. And then in this question, um, you basically would have to answer the questions. Um, I'm just going to look at st um, this step here. So what we need to do is insert a picture. So the picture in step four um, should have been called, so this is step four, 1732 um, image.jpg. So to insert an image, what we need to do is basically click in the cell the image will go in. So it's going to be in this cell here. And you can either click on this icon here to insert a picture. Or we can go to insert picture from file. Uh, let me go to my folder. And the picture that we're going to be inserting is going to be called, let me double check, what's it called in step four? Um, 1732 um, image, so IMG. So, yep, it's this picture here. So, anytime you insert a picture, this option here will come up. So if I go back to my presentation, so this is basically alternative text. Alternative text can be added when importing an image. The alternative text will show if the image does not load up. The alternative text can also be typed into the picture properties panel um, shown below. So if you do forget, you can always go to the properties panel. So the purpose of the alternative text is if this picture does not load up, then this alternative text will be displayed instead. Um, in a moment, I'll show you how to go to the pictures property if you don't include it um, when you've um, inserted a picture. So I typically include alternative text when I'm adding or inserting a picture. So since this picture is of um, a switch from a network, so if you're not sure, uh, you can have a look at the picture again. I'm going to type in switch. Press OK. And as you can see, the picture is you know, it doesn't really fit in a cell, does it? However, if we go back 
and we have a look it says image resize 200, 200 pixels wide and we've added the appropriate alternative text so if I click on this picture I think this will be one, one of the next things I want to show you um, if you go to right click um, so if you right click on a picture picture properties appearance we can change how wide the picture will be so it's going to be 200 pixels wide so I'm guessing we to maintain the aspect ratio if you go back to general if you have forgotten to include the alternative text you can always include it at this point here so let's click on, on OK the picture has been resized the aspect ratio has been maintained you'll notice the third column is slightly um, small now so since there's no dimensions what we can do we can simply drag on the border to increase the column size so if we go back to the presentation um, to resize an image, you simply have to re uh, right click on a picture, go to picture properties, appearance, and then once you've done that, you need to enter the required dimensions. If you are including the aspect ratio or maintaining the aspect ratio, you need to make sure this option has been ticked. So now we're going to be looking at text alignment in a table. So we can align text or actually even pictures as well. So once you've wrote some text, you basically go to cell properties. So, or you right click and highlight the text, you go to cell properties and then what you need to do is select um, the properties you want for the formatting. So in the first example, the text has been aligned um, to the center horizontally and vertically to the top. In the second example, the text has been aligned to the right hand side as you can see, but the vertical alignment is middle. So make sure you, um, you don't get confused if it's vertical, um, it's not going to be center, it's going to be middle. And if you want to align the text to the bottom and on the left, these are the options you need to select. So if I go back to my example, let me just enter some text here. So example text. To format this text, let's highlight, go to cell properties and let's do the first example. So text will be center and top. So if I click on horizontal, select center, vertical, top click on apply you can see the text has moved to the top um, and the on, on the horizontal axis is going to be center aligned uh, let's now make the text go to the right hand side in the middle so right and then we can select the middle and the text should be here so let's click on apply okay and now let's make the text appear on the left hand side on the bottom so if we go to left and then the vertical alignment in this example is now bottom. So there's lots of different options, but these are just some examples. Let's press OK. OK, that's that done. Now it's time to work with hyperlinks. Hyperlinks are a part of your website. When you click on it, the mouse cursor will turn into a hand and it will move you to a new page. Uh, or it will open a new website it will open a video for example uh, and so on uh, to create a hyperlink you need to type a text for example click here to open Google Okay, select your text, then insert hyperlink. Here we're going to type uh, the URL of Google account uh, of Google website. So from here, I'm going to type www.google.com and I'm going to take the Google website and make sure that you copied the HTTP protocol copy and paste it here now we created a web um, a hyperlink to open a website if you wish you can click on target frame uh, to identify how you how the new page will be opened it will open on uh, the same frame it will open as a whole page as a new window uh, we're gonna uh, we're going to select new page to open our um, web page in a new tab okay click 
OK and OK. Save all. Uh, yes. If we refresh here and we click on Google, it will be open Google website in a new tab. OK. Uh, if I wish to create our, um, uh, sorry, if you wish to have our hyperlinks to open an existing web page inside our website, we're going to create a new web page from file new. I need a new HTML page. We're going to save it to be second page. Save. Okay, open it, type here for example, welcome and save all. Then uh, back to the default here. Click here to again select your text insert menu hyperlink this time i'm going to select the second page from here target frame i need it to be opened as a new uh, i need my page to be opened um, in a new tab as a new window okay save all here we're going to refresh when we click this one we're going to open the welcome page or the second page definitely we didn't change its title so we may double click here right click page properties we're gonna name it second page okay save all back to google refresh now it displays second page uh, we created uh, two hyperlinks one will open um, a different site and the second one will open an existing web page inside our website uh, if we need to create an interactive button that will work as um, a hyperlink but in a different way it's like a button not only uh, a written word uh, here okay next to the image i'm going to click insert interactive button and um, select any style for your button as you wish i'm fine with that one okay uh, i'm going to change it to second page or it may be um, a youtube video for example or uh, YouTube itself I'm gonna make it um, a web a button to open YouTube and here I'm gonna get the YouTube link okay remember to copy it with the HTML the HTTP link okay browse target frame it will be opened as a new page okay we have to type the link again okay it will take time to load the button we're going to wait and uh, I need the button to be in the center so click here to change its alignment uh, save all don't forget to click save after each step so it will be displayed on the web page after you refresh when I click here it will open YouTube on a new tab now it's time to add some styles to our image step number one to change the borders or any style related to your image by right click your image texture properties okay from appearance we're having a wrapping style if we're adding uh, like a, a text surrounding our image it could be to the left to the right or none 
uh, from the layout we may change its layout middle to keep it default and so on i'm gonna keep it middle uh, here for the border if nothing is written and by default it will be nothing i'm gonna make it like 10 for example and click ok now we activated ok the uh, image borders from css properties while we are selecting the image it will display the uh, properties of the image we can see it from here tag properties the alternative name uh, the height the source of the image uh, as we had in html the width of the image uh, don't forget that we can change the width and height from appearance while keeping uh, aspect ratio if we change it the width the height will be changed i'm going to change it to 300 okay so we're going to minimize the height uh, according to the width you need only to change the width so the height will be changed okay now it's smaller back to css properties i'm gonna change the border color to any color and i'm going to change the style to doubled style or to uh, dash for example now we managed to change the borders style but make sure first to click texture properties and activate the border thickness then go to css properties and change whatever kind of uh, properties you need uh, this is for the image properties now we're going to take a look on some properties related to the table i'm going to place my mouse on the first cell then select the whole table okay then right click select table properties uh, from layout you can change the alignment to default left center we're gonna keep it center uh, the float uh, if it's default it the float will be to uh, yani related to the alignment okay uh, the float will determine the position of the table if we have it to left and click apply the table will be moving to the left if we have it to right it will be moving to the right if we keep it default it will take the position of the alignment okay from here you may change the width uh, and height uh, from the cell uh, padding uh, the cell padding will determine um, the spaces between the borders of the table and the text written on each cell here we're having a cell padding a padding like one if we made it like 20 and click apply you can see that the text now is somehow uh, far from the borders if we increase the uh, the value to be like 50 there will be more space between the border here and the text here apply okay it will be more yani the space will be more we're gonna return it back to 10 and apply uh, the space or the cell spacing they are the spaces between the cell if we make it like uh, 20 click apply the spaces will be large if we made it zero there will be no spaces between the cells uh, the borders uh, they are the outline border okay we're not talking about the cell i'm talking about the borders the outline border of the table the size of the border here is zero was no color if we made it like 10 and we selected a color for example this one and apply now we're having a border with a width of 10 uh, we may change it back to like 
try to collapse and click apply there will be no space between the border and um, يعني احنا قبل ما نعمل collapse لو خدتوا بالكم لو شلنا التك دي عملنا apply كان في كده small space لو شلنا وحطينا collapse الكل هيخلي ما فيش اي سبيس اوكي فاحنا هنخليها لايك like مثلا 5 uh, to be smaller and apply اوكي باك جراوند كلر ات كود بي وايت باك جراوند وي ماي يوز ان ايمج از ا باك جراوند براوز اند سيلكت ان ا باك جراوند فور يور تيبل بس ام جونا كيب ات ويز اونلي ا كلرفول باك جراوند وي سيلكتد ذا وايت باك جراوند Uh, if you need to set the styles we made now to be the default properties of any new table, you can tick this one and click apply. Okay? Uh, I will not keep the styles as my default. Every time I'm going to insert a table, I'm going to change its properties. If you want your uh, website having the same properties for the whole tables inside the website, Tick set as default for new tables. Click apply. Okay. If we click save all, yes, refresh. This is the final result. Okay. Uh, we may increase the height of the table to fill in the whole screen as you wish, uh, and so on. If we open Classera. Okay, you are going to find the covered materials of Quest 2 posted on week 7 preparation as well as uh, two links to uh, download uh, expression web and another one is a video that will help you to download expression web. So try to download the app, uh, follow the steps in the revision video. This is too important here. We're having two links. If you click the link here, you're having the source for downloading expression web and watch the video here to give you a full uh, understanding of the steps to download expression. Thank you so much and good luck.